go live. All right, so the intro is gonna play and all that. Oh, okay. And then I can check the audio. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA. I have a special guest with us here today. We got Ted Check. What's going hey, on, Ted? Anna. How you doing, man? Man, Good to see you again. It's been a minute. There's been a lot that's yeah. changed. A lot. <laughs> yeah, you ain't kidding. I mean, listen, I remember when me and you were doing the podcast originally on Evil Intoxicated, we were covering UFC 200. And if you guys remember, like, around that time, like, John Jones got busted. He was about to fight DC. DC had to fight Anderson Silva, UFC 200. Amanda yeah. Nunes, uh, Misha Tate. I mean, there's been so much that's gone down. We got a lot to cover here, Ted. I mean, what are we going to yeah. be discussing here really is, you know, the latest MMA news that's been going around and also some refreshers on what's really changed between UFC 100, 200, and 300. And what I'd really like to start with here is when UFC 100 came out, you had Brock Lesnar, right? You had all these huge fights on the card. UFC 200 tried to get Connor on there. Um, right. That didn't work out. The John Jones thing, that didn't work out. And then eventually, UFC 300 comes out. And it feels like everything's been downgraded. I mean, between the images of the UFC 300 banner, um, there's no yeah. superstar here, Ted. And what it reminds me of is the WWF era after Hulk Hogan, right? That's kind of what it reminds me of right now. Uh, okay, so so so, kind of we're we're in kind of a valley as opposed to a peak. Is that is that what you mean? Well, let me let me make it a little clear. After Hulk Hogan, right? He started fading out. They brought in the Ultimate Warrior, right? Yeah, he was supposed to be the successor. They they had him. He pinned Hulk Hogan at one of the WrestleManias. Yeah, I remember that. So right now they're trying to build all these superstars. You got Sugar Sean, right? He goes in there. He gets the finish. You got John Jones still doing a thing. I still think he's one of the greatest of all time. Um, Conor McGregor, he's out doing movies right now. He's not really around. Who is really out there that the public knows? Like if you had to go to your, your kid, if I had to go to my mom, if I had to go to the bank, the ice cream man, anyone, who really knows right. these fighters on UFC 300? I mean, what are your thoughts on UFC 300, Ted? All right. So, yeah, I, I, I've, I've given this some thought. Um, I think people put a lot of pressure on the UFC or or the, the, there's there, or maybe the UFC is putting pressure on itself, you know, just because of the number. You know, it's a it's a it's 300. So it's a big deal as far as the number. Um, but, you know, just because it's the number doesn't mean that you have to have. The biggest fights because the fight game is so unpredictable you, you you can't it's so very difficult to get everything to line up just so as we've seen i mean you know with with, with so many cards uh it just so it's just so uh and it's nearly impossible to get everything lined up and say okay i'm gonna have this guy you know we want connor on ufc 300 and we want all these other guys you know um so I think there's 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 an expectation there, and maybe it's an unreasonable one amongst the fans that this that has to be the card, you know, of the century. And 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 who knows? Maybe it still will be as far as like when you just look at the fights, you know, pure action in the fights. So you know uh, what goes on in the fights might might be great, but name wise, yeah, they they don't really have. Uh, the, the the name recognition, you know, that the, they don't they don't have all of the stars on this card. No, they don't. And what I feel like the UFC is doing here is they're relying on the number three hundred right now. I thought they could have done a lot better. There's a lot of fans out there. No matter what, they're gonna pull in numbers. But what is their biggest mistake here? Like, what was your thoughts on? If you had to make UFC 300, wouldn't you have John Jones on there? Wouldn't you have Conor McGregor on there? Wouldn't you have Sugar Sean on there? Wouldn't you have, you know, uh, Kayla Harrison coming over from PFL? People would be excited. MVP he fought at UFC 299. People could have been excited about right. that. Uh, people were rumored about Habib coming back. 
I mean, it doesn't feel as special as UFC 200. So what would have right. made it special for you? Well, um, well, let me, let me, let me say this. Uh, they probably tried. They probably tried like hell to get cut. And, and for whatever reason, um, and, and maybe we'll get into this later because I know you want to talk about him, some other things going on in his life. But, uh, you know, uh, either he's, uh, he's just not ready yet. You know, he's, he's still doing right now. He's, he's doing all sorts of hype for the, for the movie, for Roadhouse, which I just watched. And, if, yeah, if you want to talk about that, we can talk about that. Um, so, so I saw it when, it, you know, a couple days ago or whatever. Actually, I watched it twice because I, I watched it once by myself. Then I watched it with the wife. So I can't believe she wanted to see it, but, uh, you know, she likes Jake Gyllenhaal. So whatever. Um, anyway, I'm sure they tried like hell to get Connor. They tried like hell to get John Jones. Apparently he's still injured. Um, we saw that it's kind of, I, I like that, uh, Tom Aspinall just went right up to him. He's like, Hey man, we got, we need to do this. We need to fight. And, and he, he clapped him on the shoulder. Did you see that? Yeah. That's like his and, and thing. Then, and then yeah. John Jones pushed him off. That's you know, a, that's like his big I thing. Like that. Well, right. So so John Jones is is apparently still rehabbing. I guess it's his shoulder. So, you know, like I said, uh, just things just weren't lining up. You know, I'm sure they wanted to get a really really stacked card, and of course Dana White has to now that he has the card set, and and you know fans are kind of meh. You know, he's got to say, oh well, every every uh, fight on that main card could be a a main event fight. Uh, you know, he's got, he's got to be the carnival barker. He's got to be the PT Barnum and, and say that, of course we get it. Um, but, but yeah, <laughs> PT Barnum. Right. PT Barnum. Oh yeah. He's the carnival. Yeah. He's got to, he's got to hype it up. Sure. Um, I wonder if they're going to raise the rates. Cause you remember for UFC 200, they, they raised the, the pay-per-view rate. And then if I remember correctly, they said, it's only for this one. It's only for, it's only for UFC 200, but, but it didn't. It didn't drop back down once we got to two hundred one. I, I think you're right about that. They they boosted it up and they're like, oh, you're gonna get a subscription as well once you purchase this. It was like part of like a whole package. But uh, going back to what you were saying, uh, with the Roadhouse movie, I I, I want to bring that up really quick because Connor said that he was ready for this UFC. 300 card he wanted to be on UFC 200 of course the movie's going on blah 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 but they did a whole season of the ultimate fighter you have Michael Chandler out here trying to do uh you know WWE promos he's going out there putting himself on the line and he kind of looks like yeah. a lunatic and Connor was even hinting that he was going to make a return but my thought was he's going to dish over on Chandler and he was going to end up fighting somebody at UFC 300. That was going to be like the big surprise. However, it wasn't. He God. comes out with this movie and he looks like he's really truly messed up. So I feel like when they take away USADA, right? They give uh Josie Aldo a pass on his 6-month drug test right now and you know, the, I thought that had to do something with trying to get Connor into UFC 300. However, that was a big miss. Uh, before we get in the movie and more about Connor and what I think is going on, what do you think about this headline, man? Uh, you have Alex going up against Jamal Hill. I mean, nobody really knows who these people are. Pereira has all the star power in the world, but nobody is really paying attention to who he is. And that can't be the UFC's fault because this day and age, we know it's on the fighters and Unless you're right. Paige Van Zant or Sage Northcutt five six years ago, you're not going to get <laughs> on a seven eleven. Yeah, I mean, he, here's what the issue is with UFC 300. Not only is the card bad, but people are also complaining about the banner. It's just UFC 300 with a gold background. You don't have Boss Logic, who's iconic. You don't have um, some of these artists that we see on you uh, on, on Twitter getting the getting the shine but then you look at ufc 100's poster ufc 200 and it was all glamour this is a billion dollar company ted multi multi-billion dollar yeah uh yeah i, I don't know i don't know what's behind that I, I remember you know back when i was covering the shit out of this sport 
um, you know, getting on the message boards and everything and, and seeing what other fans were writing. And they would they would just pick apart the uh, the posters as soon as a poster would come out for for an event. They would just pick it apart and they would say, oh, my God, they had the intern do it this time. It was always the, in- you know, when it was a shitty poster, <laughs> the, gray- it's the intern, the intern did it again. It used to be you the know? gray background, just the the copy and paste. For, yeah. Yeah. So so they blame they, they you know, I mean, I, yeah, they were they were just bullshitting, but they would say, oh, yeah, that's the intern. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing here. You know, maybe they're just going with something very simplistic. Um, but uh, going to your point, your, your question about Tahea. And and uh, is is it Jamahal or is it Jamal? Would you say Jamahal? I like that. Is That's it, instead of all it these because it looks like Jamahal, or do you just roll it and say Jamal? Uh, a A Ron. So how do you pronounce his first name? A A Ron. A A Ron. Be nice. Be nice. <laughs> anyway, so I uh, would we'll just call him Hill. Um, yeah. Right, An- he's the former Ann Hill. Camp we'll and- call him uh, J Ann Hill. J J Hill. We call him Jay Hill. Yeah, so uh, he's the former champ, and, and Pahe is the, is the current champ. Uh, there was a crazy video that got out. I, I, if I was Pahe, I would have I would have tried to put the kibosh on that. But you got some little rapper who, who knocked him out. I didn't see that. I didn't see this. What? What? Oh yeah, I can't remember the kid's name, but uh, y- you know they're just they, they got the boxing gloves on and, and they're sparring, and it seems like it's light. But the guy gets him right on the button. And and down he goes. Down to Heya goes. Really? I didn't I did not see that. I did not see that. Yeah, can't remember the kid's name, but uh yeah, he's he's a rapper, apparently. What and, is- uh I don't know how much I don't know what kind of skills he has, you know, whether he was golden gloves or you know what his background is, but he he got a shot in on Pahea. Was this now and recent? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. reminds me of I th- what was it? Was it the Conor McGregor rumors of him getting knocked out before going into a? F- there was there was one big fight where everyone was saying, "Oh, he got knocked out." I think it was John Jones. Everyone was saying he got well, knocked out before an upcoming fight that he had. And well, if you go back to Pride, there was a backstage altercation between Vanderlei Silva and Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse. <laughs> And they said, and and the and the rumor was that Crazy Horse knocked Vonderlay out, and that was in Vonderlay's when Vonderlay was destroying everybody. There's you know, clips of it, juiced, but not he was the juiced clip. up, and he was and he was the champ, and he was he was just tearing cats down in in Pride, and and supposedly there was, yeah, you know, it was just Crazy Horse by himself, and he got surrounded by all these Brazilians, and and uh, he, he knocked Vonderlay out, and it was now there was no. Uh, footage of that. What, what the footage was when uh, one of Vanderlei's um, uh, teammates got Crazy Horse. It was just after that, right after Crazy Horse knocked him out. Then, then he start then he starts going with Vanderlei's teammate, and the guy gets him in the triangle, and 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 uh, Crazy Horse goes to sleep. That's right. That's right. That's the only footage. I don't know if that was what you're thinking of. I think that is what I was thinking of there. And you know what I have to say about it? I mean, between. Like not to get off topic, but like, what are all these fighters doing? Going in there against streamers, going in there against like all these, yeah. like what? We don't need any of that. It looks bad, and this is another case where oh, it looks awful. A terrible look. It's a ter- yeah, that that right there with the with the rapper and Pahe is a terrible look. Um, but I guess once he once it got out there, you know, he couldn't shy away from it. So I think he just. He might have even posted it on some of his social media, like trying to play it off. Like, well, yeah, that shit happens. Are you um, a little surprised that they didn't do a third fight? What, maybe the fourth fight at this point, if you consider it, against uh, Adesanya for UFC 300? Oh, yeah, that, I, um, I wanted to see it, uh, but I guess then he just um, decided he was going to move up to 205, right? And and uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what that was all about. Um, you know why? Why he wouldn't want to avenge that knockout? I have no doubt in the world that this main event, because I, me and you used to always talk about this. If your co-main event and your main event don't put on fireworks, no one's gonna remember. Of course, people are gonna buy this card. I think it's a great person to have two two people to have, but it, it's lacking a little bit. And if there's one thing they could add still as a surprise, even though it's a little late, what about this, Dad? The surprise being. Goldie returning 
to be commentating <laughs> for UFC 300. Oh, my God. Huh. I mean, that would be a surprise for sure. He uh, he never had the, the right goodbye, right? I, I would – that would get me a little excited. Yeah, and I don't even – I can't even remember what the problem was. Um, I mean, I remember the you know fans had a, had a problem with him because he would he would you know he would kind of flub things every now and then. But the the, the sentiment was, if I remember, it was was that he's our Goldie. Yeah, he he might mess up here and here and there, but he's our guy. He's our Goldie. You know, it, it was iconic. His voice was just iconic, and you could say what you want about the other commentators bringing fighters in now, but Goldie held something really special to the hearts. And if you brought him back for UFC 300, for all the people who don't really watch, it would really blend into something that felt special, mm -hmm. even if the fights weren't all that good. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, yeah, the uh, the commentary. I mean. I think you're right. It, it is kind of missing something, um, you know, and, 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 you know, some people don't care about it or, or whatever, or, or they, they just, you know, it doesn't make any difference to them. But uh, yeah, for those of us who do appreciate it, you know, seeing and hearing a, a professional like, uh, you know, like Goldie, um, it would really be something. Uh, yeah. Cause I, I don't know. I was, I was never just going to be honest. I was never really big on John Anik. You know, I, I, I don't know. I thought he kind of, he, he tries too hard. Um, and then he's sensitive too. Oh yeah. The that whole thing, the thing a couple months ago. Like he's with, never you know, been like, around dude, MMA fans. Yeah. It's like, look, dude, you're in the public eye. You, you're going to, you're going to get that. You're going to get flack. So just ignore your Twitter for a while. You can't handle it. Just unplug. Think about what all it's the okay. fighters have to it's go okay through. To do that. Um, yeah. what else, what I also want to discuss about you have 300. Not the co-main event. I'm not too excited about the co-main event. I'm really excited about Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway. Ted, this is this is a good one to be on. You have 300. Uh, what are what are your thoughts? Justin oh, I thought Gaethje. that was the co-main event. I thought the BMF title was the was the co-main. Um, I see they got Zhang, uh, versus Jan as the co-main, but this might be a little old. Oh, they oh they flipped. Okay, well maybe they. I know they were toying around with with having that as as uh, as the co-main event. Um, there's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> cat. You're cat still, has to make an appearance. I love that you're still like in the psych ward. For people listening to the audio podcast, jump over to youtubecom MMA to check this out. Um, you're you're still in the grow room. Still in the grow, the grow room. room or the padded cell, whichever you prefer. Yeah, because some people called it one and some people call it the other, but. Yeah, uh, yeah. For those who are just listening to the audio, it's it's uh, my my basement, my own basement, um, and it's just the the insulation. I don't I don't have any um, walls up. Your bubble it's, boy it's just in the there. Insulation. Bubble What's boy, that? Like bubble boy. Your bubble boy in there. <laughs> bubble boy. The boy in the bubble. <laughs> yeah, it's just the insulation. So it's so it kind of looks like a padded cell in here. Um, so I figured, yeah, why not why not uh, continue with that for for this, you know bring it bring it on back um, I, I love it but like going yeah. into the whole justin gaethje max holloway thing um mm -hmm. we, we've seen a lot of changes over there justin gaethje is the one fighter that has come over from another organization that has really put on an amazing shine and mm -hmm. what i want to discuss here he is, is the highlight that's his nickname oh right? yeah oh yeah what i want to discuss is pfl and bellator they get rid of MVP. They get rid of Kayla. They get rid of uh, their biggest stars, right? To go over to the UFC, they they merge together. We'll get back to UFC 300. PFL Bellator, they merge together. What were your thoughts on that decision? Because not many people thought that Bellator would do good um, for a while. Scott Coker takes over. He did a great job. Slacking right. a little bit as the years went on. PFL did a lot better than a lot of people thought. BKFC is the real shiner here, but anyway, um, what were your <laughs> thoughts, Bellator, PFL joining and not really having so star I, power? Yeah, yeah, and, and there's that there's that uh, that that theme again, star power, as as you were, you were talking about with UFC 300. Um, well, I'll say this first. Yeah, it is like you said, it is up to the fighters. You you have to create your own brand and your own persona and. You know, the UFC will help you 
but you know, really you as a fighter are in charge of that, um, you know, and your manager and whoever else. You know, you've got all these platforms out there, all these social media platforms. You, you've got it all right there. You've, you've got an audience. So it's up to you to, to do uh, what you will with it. You know, um, you know what, what kind of persona are you going to assume? It, you know, and it, it is kind of, uh, it's the fight business. So It's yeah, a lot you know, of eating bullshit you don't want to deal with, too, right? Just, just for the growing of your brand, like Ian... Like Ian Gary, he doesn't have to respond to Colby Covington in his old act. It's it's an old act, but he responds and he feeds into it, and it does good for him. Right, right. He, he's he's I, Ian Gary probably is saying, "Oh, Colby is an established guy. He's he's you know he's modeled himself as the uh, you know the Trump supporting American patriot uh, who uh, you know has a disdain for." Uh, what does he say? Virgins and nerds, you know, so that's, that, that's Colby Covington. Right. And, and, and he's fairly recognizable in the sport. So Ian Gary, I would imagine wants to get away from what people have attached to him, which is the cuck, you oh, know, yeah. he, he takes his wife's name and supposedly he, he, her ex lives with them or doesn't live with them. I mean, it's a rumor, but still he's, he's, if I was him and if I was managing him or, or if I was in charge of his PR, I'm, I'm, I would be like, yes, go after Col Colby so that people can forget about this other bullshit of you being a cuck. <laughs> um, you know, so. All right. So 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 that's 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 that. But you going back to your question about PFL and, and Bellator. So I remember when when well, PFL started as World Series of Fighting, right? WSOF. Yeah. Yep. They started as that, and their whole gimmick was, I think, if I remember at the time, was seasons. They had they had seasons of fighting, right? They 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 wouldn't fight year round, which I thought that was kind of weird, um, because it's the fight game. The fight game goes all the time. Yeah, it's not football, it's not basketball, it's not baseball. So I thought they were starting at a disadvantage doing it that way. I, I thought it was interesting that they said, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we got a million-dollar purse or whatever. It, I don't know if it was still with World Series of Fighting or once they switched over to PFL, but at some point they said, hey, we got a million-dollar purse, and yet still that wasn't enough to get to get big fighters. I went um, to a couple of those events, man, and, and they yeah, did, did good. You? I went to uh, uh, PF – once they turned to PFL, it was the million-dollar purse. They had Kevin Hart hyping it up. I got to go to Madison Square Garden twice for two New Year's um, for, for this wow. card, go backstage, see the happy Gilmore giant check that said a million dollars. Um, they had Kayla in there. They had a they had great fights. But mm -hmm. the one thing that made it good was it was easy to access, which Bellator has lacked. So I thought joining these two companies together could do some pluses. What did you think was mm -hmm. going to come out of this? Because it seems like they just dropped it all after one. Well, I, I got one question for you. You said easy access. You're talking about for MMA media, easy access? Um, like, I, like easy to get backstage, easy to interview fighters? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, I'm more talking about joining together to be more of a commercial brand to let people know where they're going to be. Because um, remember... ESPN deal right with with the PFL and then now that's gone they're with HBO Max the best thing is to grab onto the coattails and Bellator had its shot right there they had, Bellator was doing their best when they're putting on freak shows whether anyone wants to admit it or not I mean that that right there will will get eyes on the product sure Kimbo Slay's uh, first data 5000 Hoist Gracie Ken Shamrock oh my god best card they ever put on Wait, wasn't that the fight where Dada 5000 basically died in the cage? It has a heart attack. I believe yeah. he was dead in there for a little while. Oh, that's uh, what... And it came out later that, that he actually was dead, and that they carted him off, I guess, and somehow he survived. But um, you remember it, right? That's unremember. What's another card you remember from Bellator right. since then like that, other than MVP smashing a dude's forehead, you know? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he he was the can crusher in in that organization. Um, we can get into him later, but uh, all right. So, but I I, back, I was asking you about access because when I was covering it, I I went to a couple of Bellator cards uh, in Atlantic City, and and I found that uh, this is actually still I think when Bjorn Rebney was running it, 
And uh, yeah, yeah, there's a name. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and I thought it was great, you know, the way that they treated the media. And and yeah, I, I mean, and I, you know, well, they should have because they were, you know, trying to scratch and claw their way up to the top or, or you know, I mean, I guess they were already kind of de facto the number two organization, uh, second to the UFC, but- um, That was before know, yeah, MMA uh, was as big as it is now too. Yeah. Yeah, but they, yep. And so, but I thought, I thought they, they treated us uh, uh, great. You know, let me comment on that. There was a moment when PFL and Bellator started getting a little cocky and limiting their press. So that only Uh, hurts the company. mm, Yeah. 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 I I, I don't know why they would do such a thing. Um, Because they were, in, in my mind, at least, I, they're a distant second. So now they come together. They have two rosters, Ted. Two rosters. Right. right. So what are they going to do? Are they going to continue with two separate organizations and, and have, like, they, they had that, that joint card or whatever, so you had champion versus champion. I think that's a great thing. You know, I think the stakes are higher, and, and, and uh, so it makes it more interesting. You know, two different belts, so, so you can have a – does the guy walk away with both belts? Did they? I, I, I didn't see the whole thing, but I mean, I think the concept is, is, is good. Those things always, I think did well in pro wrestling. Uh, when you would have like, and I'm going back before WWE ruled everything. So back in the seventies and eighties, like they would have the AWA champ versus the NWA champ. Um, uh, like Ric Flair and, and yeah, Ric Flair was the NWA champ and he, and he, and he wrestled, um, Rick Martell, who was the AWA champ, you know, stuff like that. Um, occasionally they would do that sort of thing. Which and brings excitement. Excited. Do you think mm-hmm. that this brought excitement though? Like the UFC struggling with superstars. Uh, right. PFL I mean, it caught and my eye. Are trading. This, I, it caught my eye. Yeah. That, that they were doing that. And I, and I definitely looked into it a bit. You know, I tried to, tried to find some of the fights on, on YouTube and, and things like that. So it so it did catch my eye. You know all that glittering gold of the, of the two belts, you know, and and everything that I was like, oh, okay, this is this is kind of interesting. Even though I don't know these fighters, I really yeah. have no idea who who any of the fighters were. Well, let me uh, say this: I don't know how how far you looked into it, but PFL got destroyed up until the main event. Like Bellator, it right. was a clean sweep all the way up to that heavyweight fight. So was, yeah, so my question is: I don't know if this is known if they've if they've uh, said anything about this publicly but uh, yeah are they going to continue with the two organizations and and continue to have joint cards where they'll be you know possibly trading belts back and forth like that my understanding uh, will, will a title fight always be with the two belts because i thought that was kind of cool that is way back in i keep making pro wrestling references but but uh it's undeniable the connection between the two so back in japan they used to have something called the triple crown it was three different belts you, you you had to hold all three of them at the same t- at the same time. They they would never parse them out, but it was called the triple crown because it was three distinct different belts that you, you had all this freaking hardware that you would go to the ring with, and it was very prestigious. Uh, it was just in one organization though. I think it was I think it was all Japan. Well, hold all on Japan for the had- listeners that aren't familiar. Like, what do you mean three belts? Like, how do you obtain the three belts? Like, well, they always came as a package. Like that you you when you beat the guy who held the belts, you got all three. Okay, all right. So, so there, there were three distinct belts, and, and I'd have to. I don't even. I don't even know. I couldn't even name you what they were, but but the, it was called the triple crown. So you, so you you know so, and every when you hear that triple crown, that comes from horse racing. Oh yeah, but, that's, uh, right, that's right. Yeah, it comes from horse racing. So it's the top three races in in, in horse racing. But they applied it to to pro wrestling, and and so it was the the three belts in all Japan that you could win, and you always won them together. Like I said, so so maybe they'll do this with PFL and Bellator. You know, you win both belts when you when you beat the current champ. Is that is so that what's going to happen? From my understanding, right now, I'm pretty sure Bellator has gotten rid of. PFL like it was a one event thing we thought it was going to be forever I could be wrong because they just signed with HBO Max which I'm kind of pumped just about. Bellator not not PFL just Bellator from my understanding because 
when they made the tweet, and I have it here on my Twitter page, when they made the tweet, it was just the Bellator logo. But wait, I thought one, I thought the PFL acquired Bellator. Ooh. I thought they acquired them, didn't they? So it says, here, I'm, I'm here on Twitter. It's literally the Bellator logo. Hmm. Um, hold on. I, I'm just, uh, I know there's dead air here. I'm just, I'm just looking this up. Yeah, uh, same I, here, same here. here. I'm looking at a headline. PFL acquires Bellator an industry trans transformative deal. Well, this is a PFL saying it's industry transformative. <laughs> I mean, you could argue that point. But uh, PFL buys Bellator. So it's possible then that they're going to run them separately. If only if only Bellator, like you say, if only Bellator has the deal with HBO, and then PFL probably has their own deal with somebody else. I think he is. So they're yeah. going to run them as, as separate organizations. But then maybe they'll just continue to have joint cards. That's what I would do. That's what I would hope. I don't know. Because even I'm on their Twitter page right now. Uh, they're doing a championship series. Um, they're going to Paris. UFC. Hmm. So maybe the, maybe they'll they'll operate some cards independently, and then maybe the the real big maybe they're like quarterly they'll do, uh, you know, uh, they'll collaborate. They'll do joint cards. Well, we'll we'll see what happens moving forward with them. But like one of the biggest things here. I hope they don't drop the bag because it's really important for mixed martial arts to have these promotions. We don't want to lose them because then the UFC right. runs it all. And I really like to think that there are MMA fans out there that watch other promotions because we really enjoy it. Right. I mean, BKFC has really done an amazing job out of any promotion, mm -hmm. surprisingly. Yeah, I, I like watching it. It's very exciting. Uh, you know, it used to be bare knuckle was where MMA fighters went to die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but now we're we're seeing that uh, you know, um, well, I mean, the top guy is a former UFC fighter. I you know he's, he's um, Platinum Mike Perry. Yeah. You know he he's the, he's their title. He doesn't even have a title. Well, he's got the the their version of the BMF title. Uh, what do they call? It? I can't remember what they call it. But it, he doesn't have a he doesn't have a weight class title. But he's the he's he's just without a doubt the most popular guy that they have he's their he's their ace you know he's our top guy um he's really flourished there you know and uh and yeah it's, it's very exciting and i just hope they continue with it i hope they don't sell they you know supposedly they they had an offer uh that the the owner um said that uh i forget his name dave something uh <laughs> he uh you know he's he said uh that that he had an offer but he turned it down because um, Dave Feldman. Dave there you Feldman, go. Excuse me. There you go. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so so he said they had an offer, and he turned it down. An offer to buy the company. So I have right here on Twitter. Let me pull it up for everybody, too. Um, boom. Right here. It says, Professional Fighter League presents Bellator. That's what it is now. Ah, there, okay, there it is. All right, yeah. I think I think um, yeah. See, if if they were to totally combine, they would probably have to get rid of a lot of fighters. You know, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna take two organizations and make them one, but yet you you only ha you're only on one platform or you only have so much time. There only, there's only so many cards that you can put on per year, right? Like, let's just say for a sake of argument, like, like Bellator puts on 12 cards a year. And PFL puts on 12 cards a year, but if they combine, then the, then it's two organizations combining to only put on 12 cards. So you're going to probably have to get rid of some fighters. Well, I like running them separately because that gives more opportunities for the fighters. So what they have you know, lined up here for HBO Max is eight events this year. From March okay. 22nd, they're going to be in Belfast, Ireland. May 17th, mm. Paris, France. June 22nd, Dublin, Ireland. September 7th, wow. San Diego, California. September 14th, London, England. October 12th, Chicago. November 16th, Paris, France. And guess where they go December 31st? Sodoma, Japan. Uh, MSG. What's that? Japan? S Japan. Okay. Okay, that's great because uh, they know 
they know that the Japanese fans love their MMA and their pro wrestling on New Year's Eve. There's always a big show on New Year's Eve. Pride used to do it. K1 used to do it. Um, some of the pro wrestling organizations do it. Yeah, they love, love, love their their uh, combat sports on New Year's Eve in Japan. I think it's fantastic. So moving forward from uh, Bellator, I want to discuss something else here. Mm -hmm. MVP comes over to the UFC. Kayla Harrison comes over to the UFC. They're not putting him on UFC 300. We got to see MVP in there. Did you did you get to see his fight? Uh, I think I saw a part of it. I don't. Um... A lot of people were complaining yeah. that it was a little boring, but in my head, when there isn't any action, when they're throwing, my head goes wild because these are two guys at the top of the top. Any trigger they pull could end it, right? It's mm -hmm. not like Francis Ngannou versus Derek Lewis. This is more high paced. You could see all the action going down, all the thoughts processing. I thought that was actually very exciting. And I'm actually really interested to see what MVP takes on next. I mean, they're throwing him into the top 15. Do you think he has what it takes to be a UFC champion? Um, not really. Not really. He could be a star. Well, he could be a star. He could be a star, and then you know, if he continues, he could he could be a gatekeeper. Uh, and why I say that is that um, I mean they, they, he put in a lot of time and a lot of years in Bellator, and and they never really challenged him. And and the times that he was challenged, he lost. He yeah. lost. Well, the one the Lima. one time he lost. He lost one time against Doug Lima. Yeah, but I mean they just kept feeding him cans, you know, and and. In that way, he was able to show, uh, you know, his skills and and make exciting fights because he just hey, he had it in the bag, you know. Um, but I I don't. But against stiffer competition, he's not going to be able to do that kind of stuff. So you, you were saying that, uh, you know, you're describing his fight in the UFC as boring. I, so so it sounds like he was a little bit more uh, careful and guarded with what he was doing. But not uh, like Eddie Alvarez, where he stuck to his wrestling and didn't show us the real underground king. You know, Eddie Alvarez, all he was doing up to the championship was he was relying on his wrestling in a lot of boring fights. It wasn't like that. Okay. All right. Um, but I'm sure that he, he was putting pressure on himself not to lose. Like, you, you, you do not want to lose your UFC debut. No. no. Uh, you, you know? So, yeah. Okay, so fine. He won. So, yeah, give him somebody tougher. See what he can do with whoever, with whoever that is. So what about um, Kayla? I, I, now you I think also it's his age, too. The other, the other fact I was just going to say quickly. So. I mean, he's 35, I believe. So, you know, he's, he's getting on in years. He, he ain't no spring chicken anymore. Um, you know, he's kind of getting into that territory of maybe kind of almost past his prime kind of thing. So you know, they, say 30, they say 30 is like the nexus. 29, 30... It's where where your where your skills and your and your strength and your age it, they kind of all come together, and if you can if you you can harness that at that time you could you could and you know if everything falls into place you know you could possibly be a champ. Well, Michael said. Chandler said something that I thought was really special. A lot of people they think I need the gold, I need the title to make sure that I'm remembered, I'm loved. Michael Chandler said something amazing. People aren't going to remember that. They're going to remember how you made them feel. And I think that's something mm -hmm. MVP brings to the table. Kayla Harrison brings to the table. Um, but with, with Kayla, with MVP, if they didn't leave those organizations, they would end up having to find a second job in a couple of years, probably. Yeah. Oh, I, I just had a thought about MVP. I think a, a lot of it might have to do with, okay, so so some people want to see this exciting fighter, you know, they, they want to see him do crazy moves. And then the, the other side of it is people hate cocky fighters and they want to see the fighters get their comeuppance. Cause there's, there's a, I, I comeuppance. Yeah. They, they, they want to, they want to see retribution. Um, yeah, because there's, there's a, I can't remember the, the name of the YouTube channel, but 
this this one guy calls it's dirty fighters who you know get a get a uh, get a bit of karma and and so that you'll hear the announcer oh this rat so that he calls them rats i know what you're talking about i can't think of his it's name just, it's it's one channel it's one channel it almost sounds like the voice is ai it may not even be a real person it might be an ai voice but he calls it you know the dirty rat you know it'd be like gilbert yavel remember that guy or gilbert ivel he yeah. was a really really dirty fighter well you know and then it'll show one fight Paul where Harris. He beat down. you know or, or there's it's so many of them yeah yeah who's smart paul harris would, would be another one but yeah it's rat after rat yeah you know, go for dirty rats yeah yeah so so there's i think in, in a lot of people there's that uh desire to see the cocky fighter get put down now i'm glad you said that it's a good transition i mean I, we're gonna round it all out perfectly it, it seems like last night somebody got bit in the middle of the fight <laughs> yeah. what dana white did here after the fight he gave the opponent a bonus he then mm -hmm told the fighter who bit him mm -hmm. see ya but in the past right. Ted we've seen situations yeah. like this Roy Nelson kicking um, Big John we've seen Mickey Gall bite Diego Sanchez what are some other crazy things we've seen in there where fighters really haven't been punished uh, Paul Daly punched um, Josh Koscheck. that's right after the fight yeah, sayonara to him right yeah wow right. that's so, a throwback yeah my theory on that was I was thinking about that before we started but you just mentioned somewhere they, they got away with it. My theory was Dana White hates to be embarrassed. So if you do something in the cage that embarrasses Dana White, that embarrasses the UFC, that embarrasses the sport of MMA, then you're gone. But if you do something outside, like John Jones getting pulled over and he's got weed and he's got whatever, or or he beating his wife or whatever. His wife, yeah. his Allegedly. Wife, or, yeah, Connor uh, taking that dolly and throwing it at the at the bus, beating old men up. Uh, right, yeah, <laughs> you do that outside of the cage, and it seems like you know he'll bail you out, he'll support you. Calling maybe Brazil a bunch of filthy animals, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it also has to do with the fact that Connor and John Jones put asses in the seats and sell pay per views. Mm. Maybe that's why they keep getting chances. But it, I don't know. Because I remember there was a guy, I can't remember the guy's name, he might have had one UFC fight, and then he, he got charged with domestic violence. It was just an allegation, and 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 Dana gave him the boot. He had, like, one fight in the UFC. He was not known by, you know, he I, wasn't really a known fighter. I was thinking about, what's his name, him. Jesse from The Ultimate Fighter. He won The Ultimate Fighter, then he got kicked out he got brought back for the redemption season that we covered what the hell is his name mm -hmm. um but yeah dana white se seems to do that was that the right call here though i mean to to fire fighting him? is pretty serious i mean that's that's pretty damn serious um so i i i don't i don't really have a problem with it yeah you know, swift justice swift yeah. justice you know i mean he he needs to send a mess dana white needs to send a message you know, to to everybody out there, to the even to the critics, even if he he would he would tell you he doesn't give a shit about the critics, he does, I think. Uh, so he needs to say, hey, look, that's not allowed, and you know, justice is going to be swift. You, you, you're out. You're done. I'm glad that you, know, you said that because you mentioned Ted. He'll punish you for things that he gets embarrassed about, but outside the ring. Where do we draw the line? Like, what is right? What is wrong? Should it really be this kind of dictatorship, or should there be set rules? Like, I kind of like it well, this I mean, way, the, but I mean, the UFC is the, the UFC is is its own company. You know, it, it's not like um, boxing, where where you have the, the different organizations, the WBO and the, and the, um, all these different organizations, and then the the, the promoters just put on the fights. But the, the UFC is is running everything, so they can do whatever they want. If they want to bring you know? in an NFL player that's beaten his wife and is kicked out, they could do that. Oh, <laughs> Greg Hardy. Yeah, like it just right. seems all yeah, over yeah. the place. You know, that's just that's just. Right, yeah, no, I was there. I was against that. I was against bringing him in, but I think they were thinking about well, this guy's a this guy's an ex NFL player number one, so he's bringing a fan base with him. But also, a lot of people hate him. So they want to see the bad guy, you know, get the shit kicked out of him. Also, Ted, 
kind of bad timing to piss off Dana because there was just a huge settlement. Ted, do you want to talk about this huge? Se- you heard about the settlement? Uh, it's, it's, so it's a number of fighters that that uh, filed a uh, civil suit against the UFC. It's been in the courts for several years, right? Like three, four years, something like that. Well, remember they tried doing a fighters um, organization union. union. Remember that? Union. Right. Yeah, there was talk of a, of a union. Uh, but I, I forget what was what was the main uh, complaint from these this group of fighters. I know John Fitch was involved and some other guys. Um, what's his but name? What was their, what was their main? Tim main Silvio, thrust? like having his arm broken in half, and years later he shows the photo of his arm and the surgery how it got botched, and like UFC will not pay oh, that for was that. Frank Mir. Frank Mir broke that arm. Oh yeah, Silvia pretended like nothing happened at the time either, if you remember. But you could see it in slow mo. He had he had the arm bar on, and the thing just went poof. So I think it had sun. That was disgusting. Yeah, but had to do with like healthcare, taking care of the fighters. I believe so. But the way that people are saying they're going to be paid out is all different with how long you fought for. But I think that's a huge win and something that I really never thought we would see. Mm. Okay, so they did settle with the fighters. Is that right? Yeah, they did pay out. It was a payout. A settlement. Yeah. Okay. Each fighter, oh, I good, believe, yeah. is getting around about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, depending on your activity and uh, what you right. need to get covered for. I mean, if you if you look at other professional sports, I do believe that that the UFC fighters, that the majority of the UFC fighters are are paid the least. But right? would when you, you say the average salary? Yeah. Average salary for football for NFL. Or baseball, like the like the bottom, even the like the bottom rung, not even the average salary, the bottom rung salary, is probably still more than most UFC fighters make. I yeah, that's something I that they so. put out there. So like my point here is, Ted, it has to happen in the organization. Like you have to get hurt in the organization. That's the only thing I I find fair. They shouldn't have to take okay. care of these fighters forever but if you have issues medical issues this and that i feel like the ufc should cover that especially for their former champions well yeah and i think it i think some of it might have to do with the fact that they are independent contractors they're not actually employees of the ufc and the ufc does that so that they don't have to have to cover their health care and everything because like you know you have a job i have a job and uh you know most jobs have some type of health care attached to them and they also, most jobs have some type of, uh, you know, like a 401k, some type of retirement. But when do you get the golden yeah. pin of saying, listen, you did your part for us. Uh, you made us the money. You brought the crowd in. You put on exciting fights. You deserve, like, right. I feel like it's really important. Well, if you're important. Forrest Griffin, if you're Forrest Griffin, you do. Oh, yeah. So, so, so well, I mean, he he's, Dana has found work for Forrest Griffin over the years. I mean, <laughs> Crazy ones, yeah. He, he, he's he's kind of he's I, I love and I love Forrest Griffin. Mm-hmm. I love the guy. I loved him when he was a fighter. I, I think he's a great guy. Um, but you know, and and so for his loyalty to the company and to Dana White, he has Dana White has has found employment for him in the organization. What he's he's had numerous roles, right? Because we've seen him just recently in the in the slap fighting. He's <laughs> the, uh, he catches, ref. He, when the guy gets slapped. He's there behind the guy catching him, and, <laughs> and and then he was there at the at the performance center or whatever that that's called uh, when when uh, Strickland was beating up on um, the kid. on Sneeko. You know his Sneeko. name, bro. Oh my god. Oh, I know who Sneeko is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've 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 seen his stuff. Let's talk about that as as we bring that up. Sneeko was used to hang out with uh, Andrew Tate and Fresh and Fit, so I've I've seen all I've seen him. Yeah. You keep up with all that? That's why. Oh yeah, I do. hell yeah, I do. Sure. So let me let me let's touch on that for just one second. I thought it was really important that Sean he got a bunch of shit for it, but I am so sick and tired of all these influencers coming in, uh, boxing, you know, some of our legends and getting the upper hand, trying to make a name for themselves and trying to make MMA look bad. What Sean Strickland did here was say, "All right, you want to come in here? I'm going to show you what it's really like. You're not." Yeah. made for this and i thought it was a lesson that more mma fighters should take pride in you see all these people coming up hey give me a punch to the chest uh, kick me in the leg do this do that 
No, you want right. to see what it's, it's about, you, right? You kind of agree? See I what mean, I'm saying? In one sense, I, I could see how, you know, a, a fan would be like, oh, I wonder what it would feel like, you know, and like to have a natural curiosity. I think that I think that's OK to have that natural curiosity. But at the same time, I, I see where Strickland's going with this, because if you listen to him talk, you know, he, he'll be like, well, I'm in a room and I'm, I'm in a room filled with all these celebrities. And, you know, he, he, he clearly feels awkward, like he doesn't belong. He's not the same as them. He feels like an outcast, an outsider. And so, uh, you know, to see the it just I think something in his mind, like it, it doesn't you know, it doesn't compute in his mind. These these freakish people to him, they're, they're freak. So, so he just wants to smash them, you know, and, and then, and then, uh, because they, because they are, um, because they look down on him, they look at him as if he's the freak and he's like, no, 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 you got to twist it. I'm just a normal guy here. Uh, just a blue collar guy, you know, making my living, uh, in a sport I love and uh, that I'm good at. And, and here you are, you know, looking down on me. That's, that's the whole confrontation with, um, What's that guy's name? Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, where yeah. he looks at the guy like, "You look like a vampire." <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, who the hell are you? But it's you like so, all these fighters are getting run over, and I feel like Sean, it was so important that Sean Strickland put it out there to be like, "You want to be able to walk away from this situation saying, look what I did to the UFC champion. Anyone could do it.' No, bro, this is not made for any, everybody. So I, I just I wanted to mention that really quick. I thought that was really important. Yeah, yeah. Um, Strickland is is a guy that I mean, you know, he's he's had, uh, uh, you know, a difficult upbringing, so that has shaped him as as you know whatever our our backgrounds are, they they shape us as humans, um, and so so his, you know, was, we 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 know all about it because he because he uh, he's told us and and that I think that's you know, important that, that's cool. too. Yeah, he's, he's a real guy. He's real, and he, he's not going to hold anything back. Um, and, uh, you know, he seems to be on this crusade to show the the celebrities, the the influencers that they're really not all that, you know, Cir that, that they're really not not above the rest of us. Circling back, it's, it's such a good point because Sean Strickland this last year, especially made such a name for himself. I'm surprised they didn't add him to UFC 300. There, there's all these situations where i feel like the ufc missed before we uh yeah. get back to ufc 300 and uh round everything out here ted you're talking about conor mcgregor in this upcoming movie mm. and this is something that everyone is interested in but they don't know if they want to go into it so i want to say something i'm going to bring up my twitter right here and inside of my tags here my father messaged me mm. my father messaged me and he goes did you see the new Roadhouse movie? It was totally <laughs> awesome. Conor McGregor. <laughs> did you see the new uh, new movie Roadhouse, the remake, Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor? It's totally awesome. Kind of got me thinking in my head, like, should I check this out? So after this, all these interviews come out, Ted, of mm. Conor McGregor, where it looks like he's not okay. He is tweaking left and right. Um, mm. he does not seem okay. Did you see these videos and what are, what are your thoughts I, on Connor right now and the situation and, and your thoughts on the movie? I'll give, the, I'll give it over to you right now. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, okay. So I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube a after you uh, mentioned this as a topic to me, um, where people are talking about, you know, his alleged, uh, drug use and these, that kind of, that sort of rumor is nothing new that those rumors have been going on for a long time. Um, and I, I'm not saying whether they you know, whether there's any credence to them or not, but yeah, the, 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 uh, the behavior that he's exhibiting is similar to someone who, who may be addicted to something. It reminds me uh, of Adolf Hitler sitting at the Olympics, rocking back. And you ever see that clip of Hitler rocking? No, back no, I haven't Olympics? seen that one. I'll tag you in it. No, I, I, okay. Um, but that's real, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know what was going on there, but, 
with Connor, yeah, the, you know that the I can remember, you know, okay, so so you and I before we went on, we we looked at this like a uh, our last broadcast was six years ago. Is that right? Two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Okay. So so before that, there were I I remember seeing stuff about Connor. Do, do, don't you? Don't you remember that? You know, people saying, ah, yeah, he's on this, he's on that. Uh, waking up in that room with the girl who took the the video of him. <laughs> Um, oh, I, I got a. Oh man, yeah. Okay, so yeah, those been those are persistent rumors that have been going on, and and I'm not not saying you know. But if you look at how he used to talk, so intelligent, so with with class, to now, right? Um. Oh, and here's the here's yo know, here's the clip. Uh, let me show everybody really quick. Here's the clip of Hitler rocking back and forth. Jeez. Oh, right here. Uh, Ted, you can't see it right now, but uh, no, it it's definitely. I, I'm I'm unfortunately I'm visualizing it in my mind on some speed. Um, but yeah, what did you think about this this movie here, though? All right, so so yeah, the the drug thing aside, which I, well, I'll just let me just close that up. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, no, 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 yeah, yeah. So, you know, God, I I if if that is an issue for him. I hope he gets some some help on that. I landed you know, one point. Uh, we, we see it with celebrities, right? You know that that uh, it's kind of sometimes it ends up being part of the lifestyle. Uh, like I was having a conversation with uh, my brother-in-law today about the '80s, and it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll in the '80s. You know, oh, wait, uh, it's still not. I mean, I, I, I'm <laughs> living like I'm in Motley Crue every day over here. <laughs> well, yeah. Speaking of that, you know, like like the the, the scene, uh, the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. In the 80s, you know that was the, that was the lifestyle: the groupies, the cocaine, you know, and everything else. And that was just what you did. Like that was kind of expected of you. And so, you know, to this day, we see that with people who have millions Mem- upon millions of dollars in a members-only lo- leather jacket, <laughs> right? The member, uh, yeah. member-only. Yeah. 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 So it's like that. You know what? What's what's the next thing that's going to, wh- what can I get or what, what can I do to make life interesting? But is it alarming though, at this point, Ted, I'm going to play this clip. Yeah, I hope, is. I wonder if you can hear this <laughs> once and, <laughs> and he hit me with a door. <laughs> can you hear that? No. Okay. Let me, let me just play it for the audience really quick. He was good to me. And <laughs> I sometimes had to remind him. <laughs> like, I, la- I landed one punch <laughs> once and, and he hit me with a door. Other than that, it was absolutely perfect. <laughs> That's true. It's amazing. It seems like he can barely talk. He's cutting off his breaths in between sentences. He's shrugging his shoulders a lot. To me, Ted, if I saw one of my friends acting like this, it would be extremely mm-hmm. alarming. Um, I've seen people overdose before. I just lost my, my stepmother from something very similar. Um, mm-hmm. and it's just really scary to see somebody at the top. He wants to come back and yeah. perform. Um it just looks really ugly, but you're saying this, this is actually a win. The movie was actually really good. Maybe he's just exhausted. I mean, okay. I I would say he was, so I, I watched the movie. Ted, I'm going to, I'm going to hand the floor over to you. I'm going to put you in the, the full screen right here. Let's get this. Let's get a movie review. You don't have to do that, Eddie. We need a movie review because I want to hear this. I want to hear how good this is. Well, um, all right. So, well, bottom line is, I, after watching the uh, the remake, I wanted to go back and watch the original. I'll put it that way. The one from 1989 with Patrick Swayze. Um, that that infamous fight scene where he tears the guy's throat out, tear, tears his larynx My out. My one question, you know? is it that similar? Like, what's different in this movie that makes it maybe better? That, that would be my question. That makes it better. Mm-hmm. Or what, what? What is different about this well, that Eddie, makes it good? I don't, know, I, I, I don't. I don't know that there's anything that makes it better. I'm just gonna be totally honest with you. I, I don't know that there's anything that makes it better than the first one. Uh, I mean, I think Connor is is the bright spot in the movie. Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, he's he's a great actor. We've seen him in lots of different roles. He's very versatile, but he just he kind of comes off as goofy, you know, like like Patrick Swayze had like that stone cold killer. Uh, but he was also a philosopher kind of guy. You know what I mean? He's very cerebral, 
but he had that icy stare at the same time. But yeah, you know, like it was a great character. It was a great character. I mean, yeah, it's an action movie, but it, but Swayze's character he brought a lot to it. Gyllenhaal just Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal. He just he comes off as kind of this goofy, uh, <laughs> kind of um, do 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 do, you know, just kind of oh well, whatever, you know, dude, you know, kind of lackadaisical. And I don't know that. You wanted like Wolverine in there. Yeah, I I I I needed a, I needed more of the 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 masculine archetype, and um, I think they thought I, I what was the equal sign on the on the on the neck? What 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 did that? I know they wanted him tatted up. Okay, great, but then they put an equal sign tat on his neck. What what are we supposed to get out of that? I don't I don't know. Well, my dad so, was saying they interpret UFC and MMA into this movie. Oh yeah, oh that's totally in it. That's the what UFC's I wanted a, to. Yeah, he's a he's a okay. So so he's a, he's a for those who haven't seen it, Jake Gyllenhaal is a former UFC fighter. So they've got I, I don't know if you saw one time they actually filmed part of the movie during a weigh in. This is yeah, you'll have to go back. It was a couple months ago. It was, it was like maybe three, four, maybe more months ago. So they're so they're doing the the ceremonial weigh ins, right? Then all of a sudden they bring Jake Gyllenhaal out and this uh, this other actor and the two of them square off and and Jake Gyllenhaal slaps the guy across the face and they filmed it in front of the in front of a crowd that was there to see the legit fighters fight for this um whatever whatever the card was I can't remember the the, the card last time they but, did that uh, was for uh it's always sunny in Philadelphia with Paul Felder and a cowboy at the way in so that was the last time I think Paul they, Felder yeah. I interviewed that guy a while back Great guy, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lost his father yeah, he, to can. He, he was he He's was training from. in Philadelphia. This That's is before right. he got to the UFC. He was the champ out I there. To, I think he was. Yeah, he he was. So he was training. I forget the name of the, the place. Uh, I, hopefully, I'll think of it. But he was training at a place in Philadelphia, Brazen. He was training at a place called Brazen MMA, and and um, yeah, he was he was he was getting fights and he was acting on the side. He was he was a stage actor. He went he to school play. for it. He told him, "Yeah, he went." Yeah. So, but anyway, back to back to Roadhouse. Um, so yeah, so Connor, you know, to me was the bright spot in all this, and he's probably going to get more offers, you know, af after this, um, you know, seeing him in this role, whether it be the bad guy or you know, put him in an, an Expendables movie and make him a good guy with Sly Stallone, you know, pair him up, buddy cop movie. You know, pair, pair him up with a comedian, with Kevin Hart or something like that. And, you know what I'm saying? Somebody, I don't know, Cat Williams. Well, Cat Williams can't get work in Hollywood right now, but <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying. So um, I think I think Connor was the bright spot. Uh, they messed with his tattoos, though. They 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 took his back tattoo, which I like, and they, they made it really ugly. And then they, 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 they messed with his tattoos in the front. I, whatever. But um, and he was really beefed up. He was probably he looked a good 185, 190. Wow. Yeah, I mean he's shorter than Gillen. Gillen Hall is, is a solid six footer. Oh, I didn't know that. Got, yeah, Con or he's listed as that online. Uh, Connor is uh, is what five nine. So I think they figured, well, shit, he's he's shorter than Gillen Hall. He can't tower over him, but he was goddamn thick, you know. So he was, he was beefed out. This is better than the old old Roadhouse. No, no, no. I like the old one better. Okay. I like the old one. Well, let me say yeah, this. I, is this the best MMA fighter to come into acting? Is that what you're trying to get into? Because there's not really many out there. GSP. I mean, that was a great movie that GSP was in with uh, John claude Oh, Van Captain Dane. America. Captain America you're talking about when he was he played uh, Batroc? No, with uh, John Claude Van Damme, he was in what the kickboxer was that the, the kickboxer? Oh, maybe. But he was in the, he was in the beginning. I would say his his the GSP's highest profile role was was in the beginning of of Captain America: Winter Soldier. Never saw it. Was, oh my God, you have to. He does a great job because the, the character is French, so it's perfect. His name is Batroc. And and he's he's a character in the Captain America. He's a bad guy in the Captain America comic books. So they just so they you know brought it into the movie, 
and they and they have this this fight. It's and it's really cool and everything. Um, yeah, you got to see it. How were the fight scenes in Roadhouse? Good, uh, good. Um, I mean, Gillen Hall looks the part. You know, he's got he's got a he's chiseled. He's got a six pack. Um, he, you know, he, he, but he's lanky. You know, he's he's, you know, he he might have went a buck eighty. Um, you know, but he like I say, six foot, but one eighty, one eighty five. They they had him in the in the in the uh, when they when they had those UFC scenes, they said he was a middleweight fighter, so one eighty five. Um, but yeah, he he looked like a middleweight, I would say. And um, so the fight scenes, I, I mean, Gyllenhaal, he did a boxing movie a while a few years ago, so I think he you know he he knows how to how to move, how to convince you that he is a fighter. And uh, so the fight scenes were were pretty good, but they were you know they were filmed. In kind of that modern, slick way that they that Cut the Hollywood and... films, mm. yeah, the Hollywood films now, you know, and the cameras going moving all around, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. That see, I don't know, I I'm old, I guess that's the way I like it, you know, um, that you know you you just you just film the whole thing, and not not cut it all up. Well, before um, we get your rating on it, like, what made you want to watch it twice? Like, what was so good about this? Oh, well, that was because my wife was watching it. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, like, I watched it. I watched it the night that it came out, the day that it came out, and then I saw that she was watching it. I'm like, you watching Roadhouse? She's like, yeah, it's got eye, it's like, it's got eye candy in it, you know? I said, and she had only, she had only seen like the first, maybe like 15 minutes. Eye I said, candy oh, so of the guy who's doing the nose candy. <laughs> right? Uh, there you go. But no, no, she was talking about Jake Gyllenhaal. And I said, I said, oh, so, so you saw Connor's ass. And she said, no, I haven't seen his. I said, well, it's in there and it's in there for quite a bit. It's oh. just staring you in the face. Oh no. I wasn't excited about that. I, I don't think she's a fan. He did that years ago when he took the photos of his ass and then, uh, like last year, everyone forgot about this. I just retweeted it. Connor was liking like uh, man jerky videos on his Twitter. Remember that? Like last year, he was doing what? He people went onto his Twitter, and you know how you could see like what people are liking. Okay. He was liking videos of this one dude who had his shirt off, his pants down. Oh come on! It's on my Twitter. Uh, it, it was a big thing. It was a huge oh, thing. Oh man. I mean, I don't know if the dude's thing was a huge thing, but the situation was a big. <laughs> it was a big thing. Yeah, that's oh, the that's man. the real movie Connor wants to star in right there. But oh um, my lord, what, what's your rating no, so, for this so movie? Here? My rating out of what? Out of, out of five? I mean, uh, I, I let's okay. So five stars. I mean, I would give it a. I would give it a three point five. I give it a yeah. I give it a three and a half out of out of five. What does your wife think? Because because for us we have the interest know, to kind of watch, but like, did it seem like she was in? Okay, so so she found that the fight scenes uh, a bit long and tiresome. Like she doesn't want to see that. Oh, it's a woman. She, she doesn't she want to see that. Was it like they live Roddy Piper five minute fight scene? Like... Oh no, that but that's a great fight scene. <laughs> that was rated the number one fight scene. It's a great movie. Roddy too. Roddy Piper and and Keith David. In They Live, which is actually my favorite movie of all time, um, yeah, that uh, that was a fantastic fight scene. Do you know why it's a fantastic in... fight scene, though? Well, you tell me. So people look at that fight scene. I mean, I watched it on acid, so like, what I interpreted, <laughs> what okay. I interpreted was he was trying to get people to put these glasses on, right, to see right, right. They what was going look on, like the ones you're wearing right now. Exactly. Nobody would listen to him. So it was kind of that moment where we may see this in a couple of years where people are getting influenced to kind of keep a blind eye, this and that. It was a special fight because it would really be that way. People don't want to see what's really going on. And that's kind of right. what I saw from it as a long fight. It, right. You'd really have to make somebody see your point of view in that situation. I thought they did a great job of yeah, making Yeah, you had to beat point. the hell out of the guy in order to put the glasses on him. Yeah, he kept saying, put on the glasses. Mm -hmm. For God's sake, put on the glasses. And and the guy wouldn't do it. So, so yeah, yeah they, they, they had to go toe-to-toe. Uh, -to -toe. Um, yeah, I, uh, let's see, what do I know about that? Well, he mixed some wrestling moves in there. He does a, 
what's called a gut wrench suplex. So you grab somebody around the waist and then you, you throw them back this way. Um, he did that. He did the gut wrench suplex and he was talking, Piper was talking about David Keith or Keith David, excuse me. His name's Keith David, the, the black guy and how, uh, you know, Piper knows how to throw a fake punch so that it, so that it like just barely hits you, but it looks like it makes impact because they do that in wrestling. Yeah. So he's able to apply that to acting, but Keith David had, I don't think had ever been in a fight scene. So he was punching Roddy for real. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, I think he was trained. Actually, I think Keith David went to Juilliard, if I'm not mistaken. You know, that that uh, art school and it's famous in, in New York City. I think he trained as a dancer, if I'm not mistaken. But but he had never really been in a fight scene. So, yeah, for a couple times there, Piper's like, yeah, he hits like a heavyweight, you know. And Keith David was not as not a small guy. He was probably six two, six three, and probably 240. They they probably so, had to film that so because it's like a five minute fight scene. But you're saying, right. um, it was kind of like that, right? The Roadhouse. It was it was kind of like situations like that where they're trying to say this guy's in the. They UFC were dra- and- yeah, they dragged out the fight, you know, to make it dramatic and everything. And it is, you know, it is an action movie. So so yeah, they were dragging out the the, the fight scenes. I like the part actually better. The, the um, I don't want to give everything away, but there's there's a a whole scene that happens in the water with with speedboats. That's pretty cool. Um, so I, I don't want to say any more about that if, if people haven't seen the movie. Oh, I'm getting excited. But, I mean, yeah. So, oh, so you, you haven't seen it? Yet. I'm gonna watch it tonight. Uh, you know, I gotta, okay. I gotta yeah. watch it tonight. No, you have to. Yeah, no, you have to watch it. And it, and it, for the UFC scenes, it's kind of cool. You know, to to see what they did with the UFC. Scenes. I had no idea that like UFC was like part of. The, I thought it was gonna be like a, a remake, remake. So this actually sounds kind of interesting. So. Yeah, because they yeah, so they so they changed up a few things, you know. But they but they in some ways uh, followed the script of the of the original, you know. That you know, guy uh, you know rolls into town and he becomes the bouncer at a bar that's that's uh, being plagued by scumbags, you know. And and then there's a there's a top baddie who who wants that bar to be out of business because he's got big plans. You know, and then he sends his henchmen after the 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 bouncer. So that you know, it follows that, and then oh, and then the bouncer uh, has a love interest who's a doctor. You know what I mean? So so it follows that script in that way. But then then there's a few little things that that they that they switched up. But it's an interesting movie. Three point five out of five. You're giving it. Yeah, I, I would give it that. I would give it that. I mean, you know, like I said, Connor's the bright spot in it. He really got into that role uh, for a guy who's never made a movie. Yeah. Like, I, I think I think he does a great job really, you know, immersing himself in that villain role. So yep. to round this out, our last topic here. Um, I mean, to round that out. You could go from a movie but before I get to the last topic, you could go from a movie to fighting. Because Connor said he was ready to fight Michael Chandler. I'm surprised it wasn't on UFC 300. But we saw Michael Bisbing do the same thing, knock out Luke mm-hmm. Rockhold. So kind of a disappointment. Um, to round this out, Ted, there's one thing uh, I really want to talk about here. Okay. We had almost lost a legend last week. Mm. Uh, it's something I haven't really discussed. It's something I was really surprised in. Uh, when you heard this story... You you want to tell everybody what what happened? Are you familiar with the story? Do you want to bring oh, everyone? About Mark through? Coleman. Mark Coleman. Mark Coleman. This is Mark this is Hammer such Coleman. a story. If you could bring us through it. Yeah. So and it's one because I I um used to be a newspaper reporter and I and I covered uh for about twenty five years I I covered uh, a lot of fires um and uh, and unfortunately some of them were fatal fires, you know where 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 bodies were taken out of homes. Um, so I don't know. I have no idea how the fire started, but, but it was in a, I, I, I guess it was in his parents' home. And so, and, but he was there, Mark Coleman was there. And so he ended up saving his parents. He, uh, it sounds like single-handedly hauled them out of the burning home and, uh, in the process and, and they survived. And in the process, he, um, you know, as you would kind of expect, you know, he uh, he suffered some fairly severe 
uh, injuries. I, I, I think it was, you know, mainly smoke inhalation, um, which is, which is really, uh, uh, can be really damaging. I'm pulling up and the so photos I, I get, for everybody here. Yeah. And there, there was one little video that I saw, uh, where, you know, he's laying in the hospital bed and his two daughters, um, come over to the bed and hug him. And he's, and he just starts crying. And he, and he said that he couldn't save hammer, which was his dog. So unfortunately the dog died in the, in the fire. Now the dog um, is the one who actually woke him up. Is that right? Yeah. The, the dog's the one who woke him up and he, he went in there, saves the parents. He tries going back into the house to save hammer. Yeah. And that's when he sadly fainted. That's when what? That's when he, he fainted from uh, smoke inhalation. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's terrible. Um, yeah, I covered a lot of fires where where animals died, um, and unfortunately, uh, where where people died as well, and 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 people trying to get back in and and save animals and save people, and it's terrible. Um, shout, shout out! Yeah, I don't shout out to a legend actually making it. Uh, oh my god, yeah, Ted. Yeah, the, what a what a hero! What a hero! You know, to do that. The last thing I I really want to talk about here, which I'm going to give it right to you. Dana White comes out and he says the greatest welterweight of all time, <laughs> Kamaru Usman. Now, we all know that he has this grudge that he holds against GSP. You know, GSP comes back on his knees begging for the for the shot to come back, fight Michael Bisbee. Comes back under one circumstance. If I let you come back, you are not allowed to vacate the title. Hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, one thing led to another. GSP vacates the title. Now, everyone's in here going back and forth of who's the greatest. Ted, over the years, welterweight, we've seen a lot of amazing fighters. Matt Hughes, GSP, um, Sean Shirt, right? Uh, what, are, what are some of the greats out there that would probably come over Kamaru Usman, in your opinion? Huh. Um, I mean, he, he is a... Uh... You know, he's a great champion. That that's for sure. I guess my, my thoughts. You know, the U the UFC, and we, we kind of touched on this earlier. The UFC is is a hype machine, right? You always have to, you always have to say that, that whatever, whatever the product is right now, whether in the product being your your fighters and your and your and your cards that you're putting on, that's the best. That's the best that's out there. Although although Usman is still active and he's he's not the champ right now but so so I do find this kind of weird that that Dana White would say this um but usually it's whoever is the champ now is the best like when Ronda Rousey was the champ oh my god she was, she's the best ever when Anderson Silva was was the champ he was goddamn best ever he was though Conor McGregor same thing right we've heard that John Jones whoever whoever is the, is the, is the top star or or is and, and is the champion they're the, they're the best ever, and I I know it, and you know it, and a lot of other people know it. That that's just what the UFC has to do, you know, in order to sell tickets and and sell pay per views. So when Dana White says that Maru Usman is the best, I don't really put a lot into that. Um, you know, you you could argue that GSP was better. He he holds a special place for me because. Um, because he was champion and then he got beat, he got beaten, uh, by Matt Sarah and, and in a very embarrassing way. Okay. And then what he did was he, he, uh, he took some time off. He got with a sports psychologist. He got his head screwed on right. And he, he had changed. He altered his fighting style to a more wrestling base. Cause he remember he was, his background was karate. But he, he altered that, and he was a hell of a wrestler. I mean, he, he was, if he had been a collegiate wrestler, he, he would have been an All-American, okay? So he totally altered his style and, and won the title back and then had, I think, several additional title defenses. So to me, that's, that's, that is a hell of Up a Up until the Johnny Hendricks fight, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, because oh, that. I made a video on that. Oh my God, you're going back, but I, I, I'm 
pretty sure I said that Hendricks won that fight. He did. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when okay. he, he retired. Right? But then he comes back. He fights uh, Bisbing. Does an amazing job. I mean, he had iconic moments in his career. The Superman punch. The way he would do the leg sweeps. Like, mm. There was mm-hmm. something very special about GSP, which is why I feel like it wasn't right of Dana to say what he said, uh, no, no matter what. So, yeah, maybe that's a, kind of a, a you know, a, a low key FU to, to GSP from from Dana White. That that could very well be like you're saying. Um, but when people think about Walter Waits, I feel like GSP and Matt Hughes, no one's really I don't mean to like come down hard, but I don't feel like anyone's going to really remember Usman. Outside of. The uh, yeah, I mean, time. when you're talking dominance. You're talking dominant champions. Yeah, I, I think you're you're hitting it right on the head there um, with, with Matt Hughes and GSP. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, U- Usman, uh, so if I got this right, he lost to... Um, Leon. To the guy twice. Twice, right? Yeah. In a row. Mm-hmm. Tough, tough, tough to... Uh, how do you, how do you say that that guy is the greatest champion? Like, I don't know. I don't. It, it, that's a tough one. It's a tough sell for me. How about you? What do you think? I mean, I I just said it right there. I mean, Usman, if he comes back, I mean, it was great what Usman did against Woodley. I thought Woodley was gonna be the dominant one after knocking out. Um, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Uh. Oh my God, Lawler! After he knocked out Lawler, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, but then we saw Usman come in, and I just I feel like he didn't put a, a real good stamp on it. If there's anyone out there to be considered the greatest of all time, I feel like you have to do more in the minds of people who aren't fans. In my opinion, I mean, there's a lot that goes with the goat, but I, I just felt like that was a little weird, and it just made me think about the grudge, and it brought it back, and um. Yeah. And Dana White holds grudges. He holds grudges for sure. Oh yeah. Like like there's no mention of Frank Shamrock anywhere. Oh, or or Tito. Right. You know? Right. So so if you if you make him angry then then even if you are, you know, Hall of Fame cyborg. Is there actually a physical Hall of Fame by the way or is it is it just uh do they just say you're in the Hall of Fame and it's just floating out there? It's not they don't have a a physical place where they have plaques or or cast iron uh, faces or whatever. I you heard, that? I feel like I might be making this up right now. I heard for a while there was none, right? I've been to basketball hall of fame. Yeah. I've been to Cooperstown. You know what I mean? Um, right. Canton, Ohio is where, is where the uh, pro football hall of fame is. They don't call it the NFL hall of fame. They just call it the, uh, the football hall of fame. But uh, I yeah, that's there a, is a Ohio. UFC a hall of fame. Place. Probably at the performance Institute though, if anything, I, I don't think that they're, I don't think that there is an actual place. Maybe there's like a, a hall like you would at your high school at the Performance Institute or something, maybe. I don't know. I mean, if they don't have a physical one, then they shouldn't be talking about Hall of Fame. If it's just floating out there in the ether and it's not a real brick-and-mortar place, then that's ridiculous. I would love to visit the UFC Hall of Fame if there was one. We'll, we'll find that out, guys. Let us know if there is one. Let us know what you thought about the Roadhouse <laughs> movie. Let us know what Has you thought about Has anybody been to the 300. Hall of Fame? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it a hall or is it a, is it like a, just a couple posters on the wall? Um, Ted, I had such a great time tonight talking with you again. We have a yeah, lot man. to look forward to with UFC 300. You're back doing it on Twitter and YouTube. Where can people find you? Well, yeah. Um, well, so I, I changed uh, uh, the title of my, uh, of my YouTube channel to Recovering Reporter because I'm now in, in public relations. I'm not in journalism anymore, although I work with journalists every day. Uh, so I'm a recovering reporter. But Connor's like a, sick- a recovering champion, except he's, he hasn't gone into recovery yet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. The hits keep coming. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. So, so it's like a sickness. I'm a, I'm a recovering reporter. Um, that's why I changed it to on YouTube. And, uh, uh, I'm actually also working on a book right now. Oh, wow. So I, I was going strong with the YouTube and I've kind of taken a couple of weeks off because I'm trying to get a rough draft together for the book. The book is about the media and, and um, you know, how we, the, the relationship between 
the American public and, and the mainstream media has, uh, that's been eroded. It's broken. Uh, people don't trust the media anymore like they used to. Why is that? How did, how did we get here? And then, and then what can we do? What can the mainstream media do to get out of that, to, to, to improve that, that uh, situation, that relationship? Wow. So that's, that's what the book's about. Wow. Especially with yeah. AI yeah. right now, well, you could take anybody's voice and manipulate it to say this and that. If the end of the world comes, you put on your TV, all the news stations are saying you need to do this, you need to do that. The TikTok era right now, people are rising up and the governments are probably terrified of being overthrown at this point because they don't have control over the media or anything. People do not trust the media for some reason. Ted, that's so interesting. I'm yeah. really looking forward to that. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we could keep up with yeah, that I'm on really your YouTube. So hopefully, hopefully by the end of this month, I'll have the <clears throat> the rough draft to my editor, and then we go through that whole process. And I'm sure she's going to come back and say, "Change this, change that." Da, 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 da. So, so it's 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 a process. It really is. Um, if anybody's written a book, yeah, it it uh, it's a big sacrifice. So hopefully, it'll be worth it. Ted, if there's anyone in in this industry that could do it, it's definitely you. And I'm 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 so proud that you're back here doing it. It's been such a long road. So much has mm. changed, and it was really awesome cutting it up with you tonight. And I hope we could do it again soon, yeah, sometime. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whenever, man. Yeah. It was, it was fantastic, and and thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um. Last but not least, you know what we like to do. Where can people find you on social media? You mentioned your YouTube, but where else can people find you? Right. So, uh, I am on Twitter. I think it's just at Ted Check. So T E D C Z E C H. Uh, I do post on Instagram on occasion. Um, those are kind of the, the, the main, uh, Facebook, I'm on fa Facebook a little bit. Um, yeah, but the YouTube is the, is the main one. So that's, that's recovering reporter. That that's my, uh, that's my YouTube channel. And, and I do a little bit of everything. I don't just do MMA anymore. Um, so I talk about the media kind of, you know, when the media botches things, um, I take them to task for that. And yeah, some other, some other things on the channel too. So it's, so it's not just limited to MMA. Ted, before I let you go, I just want you to know one thing, man. You are such a legend, whether you realize it or not. When I was growing up, come on, come, you are. And every, I know so many people who, who have said it. Ted, back in the day when I was coming up, I was in broadcasting school. I would go on YouTube. I would search MMA news. This guy would pop up in his car. No matter <laughs> what headline came up, there you were with the headline with short, interesting videos and people yeah. really enjoyed that a lot because it was so real. It was so honest. And I'm so happy that you're back, man. You're such a legend. And uh, to, ah, it was such an it. honor to talk to you again tonight. Ah, Eddie, come on. You're, you're doing a great job, man. No, it's, Just it, keep doing what you're doing. All right. Keep doing Ted. what you're doing. All right. I'll talk to you soon. It was a fun night. And uh, with that being said, guys, have a good one. This is Evil Eddie right, from we'll Pure Evil MMA. That's Ted Check. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. There we go. That's the episode of Pure Evil MMA. Uh, man, I'm just so happy to be back here doing this with everybody. Bringing Ted back, man. What a, what a moment. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Hopefully, we'll be able to get him back on. I would really love to do a podcast with Ted again because we just we cut it up. And I want to know if you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pure Evil MMA. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Anywhere you can get podcasts. Remember, guys, without evil, there's no purity. White knuckles to the end. Behave yourselves.